Well, hello everybody. I want to welcome you back down into the Pepper Dungeon, which is kind of what it's turning into for now. As I was saying in yesterday's live stream, I, I think I might be getting my office slash studio back upstairs because Fuzzy has moved into his lady friend's house. So, come the new year, might be moving the peppers back into uh, Mr. Bear's Pepper Den, which is where we started off in the house here. But today... But today, we are planting more pepper seeds because you can never have too many peppers. And here, yeah, here in Manly Toba, you can never get too early of a start. So, yeah, I have with me a pocket full of gifted pepper seeds. And I don't know which of these is going to end up getting planted today. But I do know some of them, probably most of them, are, are hitting the peat today. Uh, a lot of these don't have, you know, like a full nine for each of the squares, so it's going to get interesting. But, check out what I found when we were out shopping a couple of days ago. So we were at the bargain shop in uh, Minidosa, and I was commenting as I was stepping out the door that I needed to find those little cups. And lo and behold, somebody's like, oh, well, you mean those shot glass size ones? And I'm like, yeah. Oh, I'll show you exactly where they are. So we got 16... No, we, uh, it was eight packages, 20 each, so 160 more little cups. And I did some transplanting last night with some of the last of the peppers that were in that uh, previous 72 cell tray. I've got the kale kind of hanging out in here for now. But there's green ones and gold ones and silver ones and a ah, nice little variety. We've got a couple of the peppers that were planted in here that don't seem to be doing terribly well. But you know, when you consider the numbers and uh, you figure out what their percentage is, that's really, really not bad. I think, uh, I think this has been a really good start to the pepper season so far and I'm really excited to see what's going to happen in the 2019 garden season. So those of you who did catch yesterday's live stream, you know I got a new air pump to put into this little DWC set up. Unfortunately, I thought I had a couple of hoses and stones kicking around. I don't. <laughs> so I'm going to have to order those before I can put that in here. But for now, I've still got that, that one little air pump kicking around and it seems to be doing fairly well. Uh, most of these larger peppers are the random varieties pulled from the compost. But I mean, look at this thing. This one, that is not an unhappy looking plant. It's kind of off to the side of the fluorescent light, off to the side of the big LED here, so it doesn't really have anything direct, and yet it is, it's doing all right. I'm very pleased with that. I haven't had any more carcasses show up in here, so I don't know if they got the hint or they've just figured out to avoid it, but it is what it is. Looking over here, this is the last 72 cell tray that got planted. Anywhere you can see the empty spots, these are the ones that uh, sprouted successfully enough for me to put them into cups. And then here's that, those ghost pepper seeds that I saved, clearly not happy seeds. There were quite a few things that did really well, quite a few things that didn't. I mean the Hungarian yellow wax, I only got three out of here that I thought were actually worth transplanting. And the uh, Charles P's PP peppers there, Charles P's Peter peppers that he sent me, most of these guys still kept their little helmet on. They never really moved into that next stage, so didn't end up with as many as though of those as I was hoping. I'll have to do a replanting at some point. But for now <clears throat> Oh excuse me, frog in my throat. But for now I'm gonna put this 72 cell aside and get started on a fresh one. Okay so it turns out this peat moss that I had in storage was dry as a bone. So I've just kind of sprayed the top of it a little bit and dumped some water in the bottom of my tray. I'm going to wander off, maybe do some dishes for a while. Let this pre-soak and then we'll come back and uh, get to labeling and planting the next schwack of peppers. It's going to be a fun season, I think. I'm really, really excited. Alright, so it's actually been several hours and I'm still not convinced that this is evenly soaked through, but that'll happen over the next couple of days. Figure I'm going to get started with these paper lantern seeds here. Lloyd sent me, had uh, one of these growing last year. Only got eight seeds left, nine containers or nine spots. So I'll just take out the one in the middle there, plant around the edge. Hopefully, get a few of these growing. 
Really enjoyed this habanero. Not too terribly hot because I mean, it's just a hab, but uh, yeah, I liked it. Good shape to it. Would be very happy to have more. So we'll just tuck those in there nice and snug. Some good moist soil on top, not too deep. I am curious though, because some people do and some people don't. I am clearly a, a don't at this moment, but do you pre-soak your seeds before you plant them? If you do, why? If you don't, why? I'm still uh, trying to figure out some sort of reliable sprouting system. Obviously the peat moss is working better for me than uh, you know the native soil as it were and or even my compost was working but yes I haven't decided whether or not I should be uh, pre-soaking these seeds or not. The last tray I got a pretty decent sprout rate from uh, any of the seeds that were fairly fresh. And the only ones that really kind of didn't do much for me were the ones that I saved myself so I didn't learn much as far as that goes, but all right, I'm going to do this tray again. I'm just going to do them dry and we'll see. I don't know, maybe next time I'll set the tray up a little differently and we'll see how that goes. Soak half and dry half. I don't know, I don't know. So what's next? Well, next up, I got a couple of bags that both claim they're chocolate habaneros. Between the two, there seem to be nine seeds. So I'm going to call that Destiny. Put those in there. Well, I guess next up is this chocolate bootla. I've only got two seeds left for this. So what I did was I took one of those little tiny shot glasses that I had the bottom cut out of so it can drip through, and I've put it in the middle where I only had eight of the paper lantern seeds because I've got the dome that's going to go over this until it sprouts. You know, it'll be fine. Two seeds. I'll put them both in there. Hopefully they'll both sprout and I'll need to separate them, but uh, if only one sprouts, that's Still a win, either way. I'm cleaning up the seed collection today, in case you haven't quite figured out what's going on with the uh, choices today. It's seeds that I have nine or less of, hence two chocolate bootla. Let's see, chocolate bootla, chocolate habanero, chocolate, what is this, marugas. Got nine of those in there. It's got like holy chocolate Batmans. And you know what I got here? Because I've got big chocolate Batman so I guess I know what we're gonna put in the last one there just because we got a theme going on here now chocolate peppers holy hot chocolate Batman all right well big chocolate Batman as it turns out there were eight of the big chocolate Batman as well so once again I've hollowed out the center spot I've got a cup with some peat moss ready to go but I want to label the main body of this first before we carry on and I guess those three little seeds are going to bring it into our chocolate rush. Got three sugar rush reds left, so I guess we're going to throw them into the little red shot glass and uh, see how they do. So, as it turns out, yet another chocolate variety. I had nine chocolate ghost seeds. Now, it occurs to me that these are seeds I saved myself from dehydrated peppers, and I don't think I got anything to sprout in the last time I did the chocolate ghosts either. So I'm not expecting much from this particular corner of the tray, but if it sprouts, great. I mean, that would, that would be awesome. I just, I'm not holding my breath, you know? Turns out next we had seven plantings of 7JPN, which I'm guessing is a seven pot crossed with the Jay's peach and probably a Naga something in there. Sounds kind of scary actually but uh, you know first they got a sprout then they got a fruit and then I gotta face my fears so I might never have to get to that point anyway I've got two open spots here so I've prepared two more of the little cups and I guess I gotta find more seeds as it turns out I had four Bahuchaloka yellow left so I just split those up between those two cups gave them some initial labels and I'm gonna have to really soaker those down because that was just dry peat but Two more cells. I wonder how many more varieties will end up in there. Apparently next up was the Big Sun Habanero. Still had nine of those left. Got them down now. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting season. Very excited. Okay, cool. So I just found these while I was digging through my seeds from 2013. So you know they're nice and old. But these Bolivian Super Chili Cross, the Freaks G2 Hybrid, whatever you want to call them, these eventually turned into the St. Thomas Bane peppers, 
which is essentially just a, a super chili that starts off purple. But at this stage, if I recall correctly, there was still some variation. So some of them might look like super chilies and some of them could look like, well, anything. So since I wasn't exactly running out of seeds there, I did double plant all of these. If they all come up, great. Even better chance at variety. I'm not expecting a lot though because yeah 2013 those are some old seeds and that was like right from the beginning of my uh, seed saving so who knows they worked once but will they work now all right that is too exciting about those Bolivian super chili crosses I'm liking how well these little cups fit in there they really don't interfere with the top of the tray at all and they do have quite a bit of room after they sprout so that should be just fine. Got quite a few varieties in here. Lots of different chocolate types. Lots of, uh, well, a few different habanero types. And yeah, that's super chilly. Oh, I'm excited. So, in about a week, it took, it took about a week for the last set to sprout. Two weeks for the set before that. We're just going to have to see how it goes. But I will keep you guys updated as I do with everything in these uh, garden experiments of mine. And I guess that's where we're going to wrap it up for today. Uh, thank you so much for joining me down here in the Pepper Dungeon. Going to uh, you know, take a look at the house plants probably on Sunday. And I have no idea what else is coming up next. Got a whole bunch of stuff that I'm working on for the farm channel. And uh, I'm trying to come up with more stuff for the kitchen channel. So until you see me here next time, look around. I'm out there somewhere. And uh, yeah, take care of yourselves. And I will see you here sooner or later.